So I was reading Northanger Abbey, and in chapter 3 there's this uh, scene where Catherine is listening to her escort and Mrs. Allen as they gossip. And in her mind she's thinking of her escort and she's basically um, saying that he is way into gossip and she doesn't like that. As her partner notices that she's in deep thought, he goes, uh, what are you thinking of so in earnestly? And I hope you're not thinking of me because it does not seem to be very positive. Um, so she replies with, I am not thinking of anything. And this reminds me uh, where in this course we've learned that people don't always mean what they say and they o don't always say what they mean. And so I just thought that was a bit interesting to share. This is Animal Crossing. It's a game where your character cannot verbally communicate with other players or characters, but the game gives you the option to communicate through nonverbal cues and it gives you like plenty of options where you can emote to other characters what you're feeling uh, at the very moment. But in order for communication to truly happen, you have to be in each other's line of sight. So they have to see you when you use the non-verbal cue in order the, for them to react, understand it, see it, understand it and react properly to it. The game gives you a good amount of options for things to emote. It gives you the basics like anger, sadness, fear, greeting. I would say it's a very fun way to communicate. <laughs> Here I'm working on the visuals for my blog, like my discourse analysis blog that is required as part of my assessment this year. And I chose the theme based on like animation, which is my one of my interests. And basically also the discourse I'm going to analyze in my blog. And I tried to relate the visuals and the aesthetic to discourse as well so for example sometimes when I'm analyzing uh, written text I would look for gifs or gifs um, that match uh, what I'm trying to analyze so for example right here I am searching for writing gifs and gifs related to conversation because I'm analyzing both written text and spoken discourse, so I thought it would be fitting if my theme also matched that energy. And this right here is the result. At this point, it's not completely done yet. I'm still adding a few touches here and there, mainly links and like a few spelling mistakes. I think the overall visuals that I've chosen kind of represent what I'm trying to say in my blog entries so I'm pretty kind of satisfied with what I've done in terms of aesthetic and now I am planning on spending more time on the content itself and yeah it was pretty fun. worked on my assignments with some of my friends, one of which was an assignment in teaching methodology where we had to observe a classroom, a uh, teaching session, and basically analyze it and write a report on it, which I found that this course analysis helped me a lot in basically completing this assignment. And I just thought that was worth mentioning. I've also managed to finish my discourse analysis assignments this time as well. And yeah, that's it for this vlog. Thank you so much for listening and see you next time.